Good morning. Thank you very much. It's quite a large crowd for such an early morning. So this will be a, um, a very different presentation that you uh, might be used from this meeting because I'm not a clinician. I am really a, a microbial ecologist um, with an interest in, in, uh, in uh, the, the ecology of the gastrointestinal tract, the microbes there, and the evolution of microbes. And what I would like to do is now to, before we are starting to think how to use probiotics to influence this ecosystem, I would like to do a step back and um, discuss some biological principles with you. Um, and I think this understanding of, this, of, of the evolution and the ecology of these ecosystems is very important to define and to develop better probiotics. We've seen already, and I'm sure we see more of these introductory slides, so we have a lot of bacteria in our gut um, 100 trillion bacterial cells, 10 times more bacterial cells than host cells, and 100, and these bacteria, or these, this joint genome of these bacteria that we call the microbiome has 100 times more genes than our host genome. So we are really associated with huge amounts of bacteria that form an in, intimate relationship with, with our body. And what is very in, important is that these ecosystems are very stable and they are host specific. So if everybody here in the room has its own bacterial population and this population is, is um, stable over, over time. Just have on this slide a few of the, the benefits that these bacterial population um, that we obtain through them is, for example, detoxification of xenobiotic compounds, fortification of the mucosal barrier, nutrient utilization. Um, these bacteria in our gut form a functional barrier to colonization by pathogens. And um, uh, they are a very, and we heard that already in the first talk, they are very important um, uh, for the development of, and maturation of, of the immune system. So the question is, why, why do these complex bacterial populations in the gut that we acquire after births, why do they help us so much? Why do, have they evolved to, uh, to uh, um, yeah, benefit their host? And this is by no means um, a necessity. So, and the reason for it is because we are now thinking that we have evolved for very long times with these bacterial populations in the gut. And uh, there are even scientists now who think that the adaptive immune system has specifically evolved to maintain beneficial microbial communities in, in our gastrointestinal tract. And the, the key here, of course, is the selection pressure on the host. So if we, if we maintain bacterial population that benefit us, then throughout evolution, if there is a selection pressure on the host, this is a mechanism by which beneficial traits of this community can evolve and, um, and can become dominant. Another very intriguing um, thing about gut microbiota are human, is human breast milk. And human breast milk is what I call here a highly evolved food to support our microbial symbionts. And it contains around 200 um, carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates. And this is really uh, something that, that is fascinating to me because these carbohydrates cannot be used by the infants um, because they are non-digestible. So, uh, and it's four gram per liter. So why are these carbohydrates there? And scientists now think that these carbohydrates have specifically evolved to benefit a beneficial microbial population very early in life that then is important for um, the factors that we have already heard, the, the maturation of the immune system, the avoidance of pathogenic bacteria, and the reason why breastfed infants have a higher amount of bifidobacteria is very likely due to these um, uh, carbohydrates. So here we really can see how during evolution, uh, humans have evolved a specific mechanism to enrich for beneficial um, microbes in a very critical phase in life. And I just want to summarize this. Life in industrialized societies has introduced profound changes to the human environment that are markedly different from the conditions in which humans have evolved and which are likely to have occurred too abruptly for the human microbiome to adjust. So in other words, is this the beneficial relationship that we have evolved over millions of years? We are very successful within the last 100 years, 150 years, 50 years, nobody knows, to actually damage this and by this 
might actually increase certain lifestyle diseases. And what is very exciting is we actually see evidence for this in the Lactobacillus reuteri population structure. If you, if you look at this structure, again, you can see in, in the other, um, as in all of the branches of rodents, pigs, and poultry, we see a large amount of um, genetic diversity. But in the human population on top, this is basically one single clone of Lactobacillus reuteri. So what we think is that this human Lactobacillus reuteri population went through a bottleneck and um, Stefan Rose, um, my collaborator, sequenced a four, um, four of these human uh, genomes from this clade. And what he found is really just a handful of mutations. So this is really striking because we, um, these Lactobacillus reuteri strains have been isolated from, from different geographic locations. So it really looks like that the Lactobacillus reuteri population um, yeah, has been reduced dramatically within the last 50 to 100 years, and this is what we consider a bottleneck, and this is why we see a, such a clonal structure. And of course, it is speculative, but there is a good possibility that um, this is caused by the recent changes in, in our environment. Yeah. So I would like to finish my presentation with conclusions. So I think we have, um, or this, the field is now generally acknowledging that we have evolved with microbial populations um, and that we have, have evolved a relationship that is in many aspects beneficial to us, mutualistic. And our work with Lactobacillus reuteri showed that very clearly and showed how really um, intimate the symbiosis is with vertebrates and showed now for the first time that there is a long evolutionary history between that organism and the host. And the evolutionary of Lactobacillus reuteri is adaptive, it is specialized, so this organism has um, aligned its fitness interest with its, its host, and by theory, such an evolutionary pattern would favor the development of a mutualistic relationship, and the beneficial attributes described for Lactobacillus reuteri could be the outcome of co-evolution between the microbes and the host, and we are going to hear more about the beneficial attributes of Lactobacillus reuteri in the coming speaks. Um, the findings obtained with Lactobacillus reuteri also strengthens the notion that the disruption of our ancient partnerships through modern lifestyle could have contributed to recent increase in diseases and have, that have been linked to aberration of the gut microbiome. And um, finally, and this is what I'm very excited about, that I think a, a mechanistic understanding for, for the, this, these symbiotic relationships in, in the vertebrate gut and also the evolution of these ecosystem can help us to actually design better probiotic organisms. So we should never forget that probiotic or that bacteria have never evolved to actually become probiotics. They have evolved to, to be uh, yeah, successful in their ecosystem. So understanding how they evolved to be members of these beneficial populations that we in the gut clearly can help us to select better probiotic um, strains.